pre-mission, like starting. Um, I turned 18 the day before the mission age change was made. Um, I was actually in Cedar City at a choir thing, um, choir competition, and our teacher let us go to the Institute building to watch um, general conference that day. So I was with a bunch of my friends, and I remember they, you know, Thomas S. Monson got up there and changed it for the young men. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then he said, and for a righteous young woman, I was like, sweet, I can go when I'm 20. Like, I was just thinking, like, I'm going to be able to go when I'm 20. And then he said 19, and I was like, I'm going to have my mission call by next year. Like, I just had this distinct feeling like I would have my mission call by the next year. Um, and after I called my sister, who was 19 at that time, and I asked her what she was thinking, and she still wasn't sure. But it was cool that next year, working with my sister Sarah alongside and us both working towards the goal of a mission, she got her call a week before I did. Um, then that Sunday, my sister Megan had her homecoming. And then that next Wednesday, I got my mission call. And it was really, really cool just to watch um, the whole year happen, having Megan support us while she was on her mission, and then being there to support each other while we were trying to prepare, and just that whole thing happening within like a week of each other um, and yeah that was I guess the really cool thing about the mission just having that distinct feeling that I was going to go um, and seeing all my friends prepare as well I don't you know not everyone has that because I grew up in Utah and you know you have the huge Mormon population and everybody wanting to go but um, it was really neat to have the support from everyone and yeah I guess that's pre-mission. I was sent to the Provo MTC. Um, we went to West Campus, so it was when they had a huge influx of missionaries and they had to do two campuses in Provo. And um, I was in a district of all sisters. And that was something that the MTC hadn't seen in a while. And it was really cool. We were all going to Mexico via Hermosa Mission. Um, and it was really neat and, and great. But we were all really talkative. and. Um, we all like to talk in English, which is our native language. <laughs> um, and I just remember like our poor MTC teacher wanted us to speak Spanish so badly and we were trying, but you know, we got frustrated. Um, and I just remember one time we were all just talking and giggling in English when we were supposed to be studying. And I had this distinct impression that if I loved the people I was gonna go be serving, I needed to start learning their language. Um, and it was kind of this like, wake up Katie, like you're on your mission now, you actually have to start doing stuff. And um, that was about three weeks into the MTC. So for the next three weeks, I tried really hard. Um, I studied the language as most as I could. I would try to speak Spanish to the other missionaries, even if they were trying to speak English back to me. Um, and I just remember realizing that I, I did love these people and I had been wanting to serve them my whole life, I had been wanting to serve a mission, and um, and I knew I had to learn the language in that moment so I could be more prepared when I actually got there and express that love to them when I got there. Before I went to the MTC, I so I decided probably not to do contacts while I was on my mission. I was like, that might not be the best idea. So I went and got some um, new glasses, and um, I remember when I was in the eye doctor, I. My eye doctor, who's a man, a brother in our ward, he was like, uh-oh, and I was like, uh-oh, it's not a good noise to hear. And um, he found something going on in my eyes, like some scarring from blood vessels that weren't supposed to be there in the first place, trying to fight something in my eyes, and um, practically said I could go blind. And I was like, oh, great, that's a wonderful thing to hear before I want to go on my mission. <laughs> and um, so he sent me to another eye doctor, like more topic of this thing, whatever was going on. And um, they started treating me. But I, I remember just like feeling so stressed. Like I had felt distinctly I was supposed to go on my mission. I remember when I got my mission call, the distinct feeling like Mexico is where I'm supposed to go. And, um, and so I remember kind of going and praying and just being like, if this is really supposed to happen, I just need that confirmation again. Um, and feeling impressed to ask my dad for a blessing. And in it, um, it said that my eyes would get better, that I would one day have perfect health, and that Mexico was where the Lord needed me. And I think it was just a real testimony that he calls us to where we need to go, 
there's sometimes switches in mission calls and for health or other reasons, and I, I know that. I know missionaries that that happened to, but I knew that that's where I was supposed to go, and the Lord was going to send me there. So.